Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, I'm doing a full review of the Flashforge Adventurer 5M. This is honestly one of the best entry-level 3D printers on the market, and I'll show you why. I'm not just going to cover everything you need to know about it, I'll also walk you through the entire process step by step. So even if you're brand new to 3D printing, by the end of this video, you'll be ready to complete your very first print. So let's dive right in. This is the box it comes in, and here's everything you'll find inside. First, there's a small guide that shows you how to install the screen, followed by the quick start guide that walks you through the setup. Then we have the printer itself, which comes well protected with thick foam to keep all the components safe during shipping. It comes with a sample of filament, and it's one of the best I've tested so far. It's a 1.75 mm PLA in a color called burnt titanium. You get 50 grams of it which is perfect for a few small test prints and getting a feel for how the printer performs right out of the box. Next, we've got the power cable, which is a standard size. And then there's a bag with a bunch of accessories. This includes everything you'll need for installation and basic maintenance. You get a small cutter to trim the filament, a glue stick to help with bed adhesion, a screwdriver, and a few different size Allen keys. There's also the filament holder, which we'll install later a small tube of grease for the moving parts, and a cleaning tool to unclog the nozzle if needed. And that's basically everything you'll find in the kit. Now, let's move on to the setup. Some of the components come secured with screws for extra protection during shipping, but before removing those, we need to take out the foam that's packed inside the printer. Once that's out of the way, we can begin the installation. The first step is setting up the touchscreen. To do that, we remove these two screws right here along with the metal piece that was holding the screen in place during shipping. After that, just slide the screen into position using the two clips. It locks in easily by sliding to the left. And that's it, the screen is installed. You can toss that metal piece since it's only used for shipping. Now, let's remove the screws that are holding the base in place. You'll see green arrows pointing to exactly where they are. There are just four of them. These screws are only there to keep the printer secure during shipping, so once they're out, we're good to move on. Here, we'll install the filament holder. This is the part that holds the spool while the printer feeds the filament into the extruder. It only takes two screws to mount it, and it goes on just like this. You'll also notice a white tube. This is what guides the filament through the system. One end of the tube goes into the filament sensor, which is located right next to the spool holder. Then, just insert the other end into the top of the print head, right above the nozzle, and that's it. The filament path is set up and ready to go. Now let's connect the printer. The power cable plugs in right here on the back in this port. Next to it, you'll also see the power switch to turn the printer on and off, as well as an ethernet port. This printer does have built-in Wi-Fi, so I won't be using the ethernet connection, but it's nice to have the option if you prefer a wired setup. Here's the build plate. To remove it, just lift it up like this. It comes off easily. The base has built-in magnets, so the plate snaps right back into place with no effort. It's also flexible, which makes it super easy to remove your prints once they're done. Now, let's go ahead and turn it on. Once it powers up, you'll hear a little startup sound, and the printer will begin initializing. The first time you use it, it'll ask you to select your language, and then it'll prompt you to connect to Wi-Fi. I chose to connect mine, but if you prefer not to, you can skip that step. If you want to receive real-time notifications on your phone, like when a print is finished, or if you want to pause or cancel a print remotely, you can download the Flashforge app. The download info is in the quick start guide. Once you install it, just scan the QR code on the printer screen and your phone will pair with the printer automatically. After that, the printer will start its calibration process, and the best part is that it's all done automatically. You don't have to adjust anything manually. During the process, the printer will start vibrating quite a bit and you'll hear it, it gets pretty loud. But don't worry, that's completely normal. The vibration helps make sure the bed leveling is as accurate as possible so your prints come out clean and precise. Now that calibration is done, it's time to load the filament. I'm going to use the sample filament that came in the box just to show you how it works, but you can use any 1.75 mm PLA filament, which is the standard size. To load it, just feed the filament into the white tube and you'll see it travel through the tube until it reaches the print head. On the screen, you'll need to select the type of filament you're using. In this case, we're using PLA, which is the most common type. 
but this printer also supports other materials like TPU and even carbon fiber composites. Once you've selected PLA, just hit load and after a few seconds you'll see some red filament come out, that's left over from factory testing. Then it'll switch to the filament you just loaded. When it finishes, you can just remove that bit of red residue. The first thing the printer does is print a small test cube to make sure everything is working correctly. And I've got to say, this machine is seriously fast. It prints at a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second, which is way faster than most standard 3D printers. This calibration cube took less than five minutes to complete, and that is impressive. As for the quality, it came out looking great. The lines are clean, there's no warping, and the structure feels solid. There are also a few sample models that come preloaded on the printer, so you can play around and test it right away. One of them is this little boat, which is a popular model used by a lot of people to check 3D print quality. Now, something you should know. You can place this printer pretty much anywhere, but I recommend putting it on a solid, stable surface. Just look at how much it vibrates on my desk. While it doesn't affect the print quality, the movement is noticeable, especially at high speeds. A sturdier surface will just help keep things quieter and more secure during long prints. Now, when it comes to getting 3D printer files, there are a bunch of websites where you can download ready-to-print models. One of the ones I use the most is called Thingiverse. It's a free platform where creators upload all kinds of 3D models, from practical tools to fun decorative pieces. You can browse through thousands of designs, see how many people have downloaded or liked them, and even check the comments to see if the model works well. Once you find something you like, just hit download and you're ready to print. Now, in order to print, you'll also need a software. In this case, I'm using the FlashForge software, which is completely free. I installed the Windows version, but they also have it available for other operating systems. Once you open it, you just import the file you want to print. You can view it from different angles, resize it, or even add more objects if you want to print multiple things at once. There are tons of settings you can tweak, but don't worry, you'll learn those as you go. When you're ready to print, you just click on Start Slicing. I'm not changing any settings for now, so I'll leave everything as is and hit Slice. What slicing does is convert your 3D model into a set of instructions the printer can understand. It basically breaks the model down layer by layer so it knows how to build it. Now, to send it to the printer, there are a few options. One of the easiest is to click the Connect Machine button. Since my printer is on the same Wi-Fi network, it shows up automatically. From there, I just send the file directly to the printer and it starts printing right away. Now, there are a few things you should know about this 3D printer. One of them is the nozzle size. It comes with a 0.4mm nozzle which is pretty standard for most 3D printers. This size gives you a good balance between print speed and detail. It's great for everyday prints, and you can get solid results with a lot of different filament types. You can also swap out the nozzle for different sizes depending on what you need. If you're aiming for a more detailed finish, you can get a smaller nozzle, like a 0.25 mm. It'll give you sharper, more precise prints, but it takes longer, and the pieces can be a bit more fragile. On the other hand, if you want to print faster and make stronger parts, you can go with a larger nozzle, like a 0.6mm or even 0.8mm. It'll get the job done quicker and make more durable prints, but the surface won't be quite as smooth. So really, it just depends on what your project calls for. Also, I really like that the nozzle is detachable. If you ever need to clean it or swap it out, it only takes a few seconds. That's a feature you don't get with every printer and it's definitely a big plus on this one. Another thing I want to mention is the noise level. For how fast this printer operates, it's actually pretty quiet. You'll hear some vibration during the calibration process. That part can be a little loud, but once it starts printing, the noise settles down a lot. Here are some prints I made to test the quality of this 3D printer and also show you a few cool ways you can actually use it. First up, we have the little boat we printed earlier. It came out really clean, just look at all the corners and the details in the windows and holes. Everything looks super sharp. Next, I printed this fidget clicker using the same filament. It's a fun little toy just to keep your hands busy. And I even printed another variation of it to test consistency. Then, there's this print that honestly blew my mind. It looks and feels like fabric. 
It was printed in one piece with no assembly required and it's completely flexible. Now, this printer isn't just for toys. You can also make useful stuff for around the house. For example, I printed these bag sealers. They come in different sizes so you can make them however you need. I also made this little empanada press and it turned out really nice. Then I printed a ravioli maker, which came in multiple parts. This one is the roller that cuts the ravioli squares. It looks super clean. And these two pieces are used to press the filling inside. It's simple but really useful. Another fun one is this little toy that works like a launcher. It has a propeller and when you pull this piece it shoots up and flies. I tried it outside and it goes surprisingly far. Then there's this cute little dino. It's flexible and also printed in one piece. And for something more practical, I even printed a soap holder for the bathroom and a whistle. So yeah, the possibilities with this printer are pretty much endless. Whether it's something fun, something useful or something completely random, this machine can handle it. So who would I recommend this printer to? Well, honestly, this is a perfect option for beginners who want something easy to use but still powerful enough to grow with. The setup is simple, the auto leveling makes things way easier, and the speed and print quality are seriously impressive. But even if you're more experienced, you'll still appreciate how fast it prints, how easy it is to maintain, and all the little details that make the whole experience smooth. Whether you're printing for fun, for practical use around the house, or even for small projects to sell, this printer can definitely handle it. I leave the links for this printer and the filaments I use down below, in case you want to check them out. I try to make this video as straightforward and easy to follow as possible. But if you have any specific questions or want to know more details, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll be happy to help. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.